Many believe freedom for Gila and Shalit was around the corner, but now it seems efforts to free the kidnapped soldier are back to the beginning. Here to provide analysis is Yoni Kaminsky. Shalom Yoni. Shalom Aaron. Now last night was expected to be a dramatic announcement in regards to freedom for Shalit, but things have changed. Yes, there were very high hopes uh, in the past few days that some sort of deal would be worked out with the Hamas terror group for Gilad's release. But Hamas went back on the agreements they had made. The exact details are unclear, but the Prime Minister's office released a statement to that effect and that Hamas had gone back on understandings and raised extreme demands. Uh, here's the mail we received late last night from Omert's office. Uh, the uh, representatives of Omert returned to Israel. They updated Prime Minister Omert on the results of the marathon and intensive discussions that they had conducted in recent days. According to the report, it became clear during the discussions that Hamas had hardened its position, uh, reneged on understandings that had been formulated over the past year and raised extreme demands despite the generous proposals that had been raised in this round in order to advance and exhaust the negotiations and bring about the soldiers' release. Uh, now, according to the Al Hayat newspaper, negotiations were killed because Hamas insisted on freedom for all 450 prisoners on the list it presented. Yoni, why exactly was there this last second problem when it seemed to deal with so close? Well, Aaron, some are uh, connecting this to the Islamic doctrine of taqiyya. This is essentially to lie to the infidel, to make Islamic conquest easier. Uh, when an Islamic group will make a deal with a non-Muslim only to break it when it is to the Muslim's advantage. Uh, this seems to be the first factor since Ehud Omert is almost out of office and very much wants to free Shalit. Now uh, Hamas realizes that Israel is at a disadvantage and hope to extract more concessions. Uh, the second factor is Ahmed Jabari. He is the current commander of Hamas's fighting forces and he is one of the few who knows the exact location of Gilad Shalit. Uh, Jabari joined the Hamas delegation in Cairo and quickly made demands Israel was not prepared to accept. Uh, according to the J-Post news site, the government believes that Israel would suffer strategic da damage by giving in to the latest Hamas demands. So how are the family members of Gilad Shalit relating to this news? Well, this is of course a bad news for the Shalits. They strongly believed that the completion of a deal was coming close. Today, the family and friends set out to the streets of Jerusalem to protest for the quick release of Shalit. Uh, now, Aaron, this doesn't mean that they are all saying that Israel must give in more now that Hamas has raised the stakes, although there are also uh, voices heard in that direction. Mainly, the protest is some sort of cry out to the world, to the public awareness, saying, don't stop working on rescuing our kidnapped soldier. The government will probably not succeed in bringing Gilad back. The current prime minister will not succeed and he seems to have failed in his duty. How have those who were protesting to the release of terrorists reacted to this news? Now in terms of them it's interesting because on the one hand it seems that the government has proven that the term at any price is not acceptable and that's one of the goals of these anti-prisoner release protests. Uh, they of course demanded that the price be much lower but on the other hand there are, on, uh, there are fears that the higher price presented by the Hamas may be paid at the end if the government doesn't completely adopt a more determined and uncompromising stance. We've been informed that the uh, Prime Minister said that this kind of release it's uh, like uh, a strategic bombardment of the state of Israel. Um, again and again we have to thank uh, uh, the, the Hamas uh, not to uh, give up because it might give a chance uh, for the government of Israel to come up with some uh, tougher measures against the Hamas and all the population to back him up in Gaza Strip. Hopefully it will be with the uh, back, uh, next uh, government and hopefully they will uh, consider the, all the means of uh, releasing Sh Shalit but not the release of uh, 1,450 1, uh, murderers uh, and bring uh, danger to the citizens of Israel. So Yoni, does that mean efforts to free Gilad are over? No, efforts for Gilad will be continuing but uh, this current major push is most likely over. Uh, Prime Minister Olmert himself said he wants to free Shalit, but it seems that won't be happening. Uh, now, this all might be bringing us closer to the military option, which outgoing uh, Pensioners Affairs Minister Rafi Eitan has been hinting will be the path Israel has to take. Can you tell us what do you expect will be with the next government? Well, Prime Minister-designate Benjamin Netanyahu has been uh, silent so far. 
but it's uh, widely believed the soon-to-be premier will lay down what course his government will follow after he has a uh, formal coalition. Yoni Kempinski, thank you very much.